Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I'm going to go to a and &E today. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who it's going to be. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. Code red, pretty bad response. You're having a heart attack. We want to be in and out of scan in the next 10 minutes. I can't feel any pulse. Reception, can I help you? Yeah, 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London. One of the busiest and most advanced A&E departments in the world. Beautiful. It's as if we've done it before. We are there when awful things happen to pick up the pieces. We have a two-year-old who's kicked by the horse. We see the unpredictableness of what happens in life, and we're suddenly having to explain why it's gone wrong. I can't feel my left leg. You'll be OK. A place where life... Amy, Sophie! Don't be low. Too slow. <laughs> Love. Such a good boy. I'm so proud of you. And loss. I'm still here unfold every single day. So we don't shake hands at this hospital, we fist bump. Can I have a fist bump? <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Hello, darling. You genuinely do see the best of people in this job. You'll see strangers rushing to the aid of someone they've never met. You just see things that make you realise just how important the people in your life are and the people around you are. So what bloods do you want? Is someone, is someone getting one? B and D against A. Oh, oh. Where's A? Teamwork. The relationship, the friendship. It glues us together and we work much better as a team. Julie, can you run the gas? And whilst Julie runs the gas, can you talk to cardiology? Just let them know you had a VF. Adrian is in charge of resus today. He moved to London from Malta 16 years ago. All characters, all personalities can work in this environment. Yeah, that's right. Go that first. It's like that? Yeah. No. Oh, my God, I did it. Well, I've got to make seven. Do you want me to help you? It's like if you try to cook a soup with just one ingredient, there's no taste, but you're having a lot of ingredients in, it just works. Sit there, Luis. <laughs> Blood's coming out, that's good. Yeah. You happy with the tube and oxygenation? Yeah. Okay. Turn upside down. By relying on someone else, you become stronger. Done. All right, now we've got a date, and where's the pen? Chest and sternum. Light area. Okay, thank you. Hi, so he's got a left sternal and chest injury. Yeah. I'd like to activate the Ellie pad. Yeah. Thank you. A man is being airlifted to A and E after being involved in a serious road traffic collision. Adult male trauma, 15 minutes. So trauma's coming here. We've got a 91 male, so we have 10 minutes. Already knowing that it's a ham call and to come by a helicopter, it means that there's a high risk and high risk of serious injuries. Left-sided chest sternal injury. Okay, 
Let's see if CT are happy to take. Time. Sorry, it's working against you. Going straight to City. The driver is 91 years old and had to be cut from the wreckage of his car. Age is incredibly important. For example, in someone who is more than 80 years old, the fatality rate is very high. Even someone who is stable and awake, he could even die in front of you within a few minutes. OK, we're here. He's not going to school. Hi, sir. Hi, I'm Dr. Spiteri. We're going to transfer you onto the CT table. We're going to do a scan of your body, OK? One slide. Ready, steady. OK. So this is Cyril. He's a 91-year-old male, a driver of a car that was T-boned on the driver's side. We've extricated with help with an anterior chest injury with an obvious flail. He's got a history of COPD and a CA prostate. Friends or family? Family are aware and en route. OK. I was here and I had a phone call. And she said, it's very bad. They've got the uh, fire brigade cutting him out. But I was shaking, really shaking. Cut. Cut everything. I'm going to cut your trousers off, sir, OK? I'm sorry. So I didn't go over to the accident. My daughter said, you better stay here, ma'am. So that's what we did. So are we happy to go? So you keep really still for me. You're just going to go in and out. At our age, you can expect things. Things can happen. Life isn't for always. Stitch me. Oh God, I don't like needles. It's an awkward place. Yeah, it's right underneath my bum cheek. The kids were jumping on the table the other day. I just sort of leant on it a little bit, going through. Then, for some reason, I don't know why, I just put my whole weight on it. I was on the floor, and I thought, shit. But we've been trying to get rid of that table for ages because not long before that, Lenny bashed his head on it. Well, so you can be a brave boy when they, they're going to just literally put something there and suck it out. Pass. what? It's a special sucking machine, yeah? Because you don't want a big needle to be put to sleep, do you? Five-year-old Roman has a pencil lead stuck in his ear. He's been brought into A&E by his mum, 25-year-old Annie. <laughs> I'm a zombie, babes. I'm sexy and I know it. I wouldn't body. I wouldn't body. Oh, I'm sexy and I know it. It's just me and him that live together. The only way I can describe it is hectic. Be quiet, Roman, yeah. Should I give you a child's bone? OK, it's time for a child's bone. Ah! I wouldn't really say he's shy, 
Um, he tends to... What's the word? Warm to people very quickly. Very hyperactive, though. After about five minutes, you'd probably say, OK, Roman, give me a bit of space. <laughs> You've wedged it in. Um, in the drum? No, you have not wedged it in the drum, because you can still hear. If you wedged it in the... Pardon? What? Pardon? I'm deaf now, because that needs stuck in my ear. But you're not deaf, because you can hear what I'm saying. Can you hear what I'm saying? No. Well, you just answered me, so you can. Can you hear me? But you just, you just, you can hear me because you just nodded your head. What? Pardon. What? Pardon. What? It's pardon. What? <laughs> what? 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 People just find him funny. Even teachers. He's very charming. He's very affectionate. I don't talk to rude boys what? that say what. Pardon? Oh, so you did hear me then. His teacher said to me last year, he's so annoying, but if he wasn't in my class, I'd be heartbroken. It's been over an hour since Cyril was airlifted to St George's after being cut from the wreckage of his car. Doctors suspect he's suffered multiple internal injuries and are performing a full body CT scan. It was my birthday on the Friday and we do have fish from this friend of his that he gives us fish every fortnight. So he went over to his friends, then as he was driving out to come home, that's when the accident happened, at the top of the road. What is this? What is all that? Please, one, two, there's another one there. Uh -huh. There's something in the neck. Hold very still. Where did you and Cyril meet? In a sweet shop. We lived in a little village called Riska. We had a park and a picture house called the Palace. And I was about 15 year old, just left school. I just liked him when I saw him. And that was it. He wasn't tall, but he was big, very um, strong looking. They used to call him Lord Fauntleroy because uh, he always was dressed in a suit. Do you remember your first kiss? Yes. That's what I think I fell for him. We were up at the top of the station talking and then he kissed me goodnight and that was it. Did you know he was the one? Yes. I think yes, I think I did. Fine, we're done. Bye, 
Damien, why don't you look round there and see if there's any grown-up toys for you? Because that's for a big baby, that is. Gaga! <laughs> Roman. Oh, no, that's Yay! that. Yay! Hey. Oh, yeah. I'm Ashley, I'm one of the emergency docs. Say hello. What, what's happened to your ear? From what I can gather, he put a pencil in his ear and um, a, bit of, a bit of lead snapped off and it's stuck in there. Oh. But he didn't tell me for a couple of hours until oh. yeah, afterwards. Oh, yeah. That is the hole. Do you mind if I shine a light into your ear so I can have a look at it? Yeah, I'm just going to get my object. It's not, it's not going to hurt. You're not going to be scared, are you? I'm <laughs> definitely not scared. I'm definitely not scared. You scared? No. That's so stupid. Hold your head nice and still for me, though, just oh. for a second. It will tickle a little bit. Right, don't move. You can't laugh. <laughs> don't move. Don't laugh. <laughs> a couple of people had recently come up to me saying that they thought he had um, ADHD. Do you want me to hold that light? Uh, no, that's OK. I was a bit like, why are you trying to label my child with ADHD? There's nothing wrong with him. A teacher's also pulled, like, come up to me and said, he'll appear like he's not listening, but he takes everything in. And straight away, just like that, Roman will turn around and give the answer. No, there's no way of getting to that. Shit. Have you pushed it in further? No, it's not gone any, in any further, but we can't just can't get there. Do you need to get the ear doctor? We will get the ear doctor, OK? You're not deaf, though, are you? You can still hear me, yeah? What? <laughs> It's not something that can be diagnosed overnight. It's something that requires a lot of time. I'm going to get a lens. Yeah, OK. Give me that. Right, before, you, before you hurt yourselves with those, though. Yes. <laughs> I got a lid out skin with it. Let me have a look again. I, as a parent, need to try and help Roman be the best that he can be as he grows up. You're a silly nana, you are. That's five. Cyril is being moved to recess. Initial scans have ruled out any internal bleeding, but show possible fractures to his chest and spine. Actually, this is probably more of a focused view. Definite view, kind of. Adrian must wait for the full scan report before he can determine the extent of Cyril's injuries. Put the CT down. We're taking the bloods. He's immobilized. If there's no issues with the chest, we may go down to oxygen. Yeah. You tend to see a lot of elderly patients, and because their body is not strong, even though they otherwise look well. They can deteriorate suddenly, and at times the outcome is not is not good. Sorry, thank you. My granddad's there in the go. corner. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Grandson Gary was at the scene of the accident and followed the helicopter to St George's. Granddad. Hello, son. What have you been doing, eh? Hello there. I'm Dr. Spitea, one of the AD consultants. Yeah. Okay. Um, just let you know, I mean, he's had a CT scan. Do you know yeah. the, what happened to him? Uh, yeah, 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 I was there. Okay, yeah. you were there. Yeah. Um, so basically, we don't have the full report yet, so we're still okay. waiting for the report. Gary followed Sarah in every way. Everybody said, Gary is Cyril, really. He thought a lot of his grandfather. I've tightened everything that was in it out, Grandad, apart from blankets and stuff. I've got everything that was in there. Did you find anything? Oh, uh, there were some beans. I found some beans. 
It's a six of this. Oh, it, it, it was such a bad impact, everything went everywhere, Grandad. They loved the country. And this is why I'm glad that we came up here. Down where we came from, it was a different way of living. He was only 14, I think, when he started down the mines. He worked in the mines, then he used to come home black. And he had to bath in the kitchen. He hated it. And as soon as he had his dinner, we go out walking and go up the mountain for a walk. I said the car's right off to him. Yeah, it is, Grandad, yeah. I don't think I'd bother again. Well, you know, you, it's up to you, isn't it? You you got to no. see, how, see yeah. how you feel. I'm missing the course. I'd like to get the places that I normally go, like... Well, you like your, your freedom still, don't you? Your... Independence. Yeah. Right. Well, you know. Right, mm. Granddad, give me five minutes. I'm going to go and ring Nanny and that, all right? All right, sir. All right, I'll be straight yeah. back. Not the way, yes. Yeah. All right, mate. I'll be straight back. Just sit tight for a bit. All right. We learned to drive when we came up to Surrey. We were out in the country and you needed a car. But the first time we was going out, I had to go with him to read some of the signs for him. I've been with Grandad. You know, he's, uh, yeah, they've basically they took him straight in, um, give him a CT scan. I didn't know you couldn't read or write till I got married. But I had letters from him, and I think he had his friends writing them. I think the um, psychological side might be a bit more deep. But now he's thinking, uh, you know, he's losing his independence and all that. It's that side of it, I think, that he's thinking about. He found a way of doing things. And that's why I loved him. It didn't actually hurt at all. It's only because I went like that, and I was like, blood. I don't, I can't stand blood. But they do say what's meant to be is meant to be. So there was obviously a reason that happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you sat on a glass table. So you just said to that man you wanted to be a doctor when you grew up. I thought you wanted to be a dentist. I want to be a doctor. Oh, you want to be a doctor now? Does it change every week? Yeah, I want to be a doctor forever. You don't want to be... A teacher. A teacher. No. You don't want to be like Mr Pickett? No? no. Being a young mum was definitely never part of my plans. I always wanted to join the police, so I went to college. But two months into my college course, I found out I was pregnant. So I had to make the decision to leave. I want that one. And you say, but you don't like them. <laughs> you don't like to wear them. I want that one. And then you just... If I had waited till I was about 30 to have children, I probably would have been a lot more settled Sometimes things don't always work that way. It's almost as if I'm growing up with Roman. Do the, um, do the computer says no? Should I just check in the computer? The computer? The um, computer says no. <laughs> no, it's... <coughs> no, it's... <coughs> what are your hopes for his future? that he ends up doing something that he loves. Something that will 
bring out the best in him. <laughs> do the only Bye -bye. do the only gay in the village. I'm the only gay okay, in I've the village. I've spoke to the ENT doctor. Yeah. They are going to give you a call in the morning with an appointment. Um, um, it will be tomorrow, though. It, yeah. It might not be tomorrow. It might be the day I'm after, the depending on just how many, village. just how many people. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm the only and like gay I say, boy in the village. Kids sticking things up their nose in their ears. So someone said something about a sucky outfit. Um, sucks. But that will be too heavy because it's, it's too big to grip onto. So okay. it'll be too heavy. Why are you oh. hugging him? I'm so sorry. He's so <laughs> affectionate. Right. I like Stop. doctors. Yeah, well, that's good because be mo most, most of the kids here don't like doctors by the time they leave. So. I like doctors. Right, okay, come on now, leave the man alone. I'm sure he's busy. Right, okay, goodbye now. I'm so sorry. Oh, come here. I hurt me! Sorry, bad, bad, bad. Right, come on. Right, where's your Scooby? You got him? He's got him. What do you want for your mummy? I really want the sister because I've already picked a name. <laughs> I want to call her Isabella. Bye, thanks. Come on, Roman. Get up all that. If I had a sister, she can be kind to me and look after me when I fall down. And then if she falls down, I can pick her up and, and then we can play again. Bye, then. See you later. OK, go fine. Stop calling me girlfriend, I'm not your girlfriend. I am sexy, yeah. A 57-year-old woman is being rushed to A&E with severe chest pains. So the question is, could it be some kind of primary cardiac event? Tests taken by paramedics show the woman is suffering from an abnormal heart rhythm. The heart is made of muscle, and muscle needs oxygen. But when somebody is getting a heart attack, part of the heart is being starved. Add our priority call in 15 minutes. The patient sometimes can look well, but if we don't do something there and then, if the artery remains blocked, there's a risk the heart stops. Half of all heart attacks result in sudden death. This, uh, this young lady is Caroline, she's 57. She's had six episodes today of central chest pain. She does have fairly extensive family history. Mum has had quite a number of MIs. We've done a few ECGs, both with and without pain. So this is whilst the pain came on, oh. relieved with the GTN. And then... Just a second. This was so... during. Yeah. And this one was after. Coronary spasm? Yeah. She wasn't stented. She just has aspirin since the BMI. No stent, yeah? No, no, not at all. OK. So let's get the ECGs okay. first, okay. yeah? All right. Yeah. Julie, can you talk to cardiology just to let them know about the situation? Okay. Yeah? Caroline's daughter, Chelsea, is in the relative's room. She dialed 999 and travelled to hospital in the ambulance. That day, I'd come home from work and I'd get home at about five. And she, um, she obviously, she, she was having chest pains. I'd been telling her for ages anyway that she needed to go down the doctor's. She's been stubborn and won't go. I don't know why I was thinking the worst. So I called the ambulance. And then she started feeling really unwell. 
and I thought, right, this is a bit more serious. This is during the pain. Oh, right. This is after the pain, so... Oh. Yeah. So I just kept thinking, like, she could die. Yeah, it's a really weird, like a, like a, a numb, like a numb feeling, imagining that she's not going to be there. Yeah, that's not nice. <laughs> so what your ECGs look like, your artery is going to spasm and your ECG looks like you're having a heart attack. I can feel that. Tell me where you can feel. I can still feel, yeah. Is it still in? No. <laughs> is yeah. it not? Yeah. It is. What is that? It's in your head. Then? It's in your head. <laughs> now. Yeah, you little liar. Is it there? <laughs> Did you do it? So what is that then? Nothing. <laughs> All right, mate, going down sunny, mate. <laughs> Sorry, right. mate, I had to find Obviously, everybody wants to know what's going on. Yeah, but... Yeah, Nanny might be coming up. I'm not 100% sure. Earlier today, Cyril was involved in a serious road traffic accident. He's weather report for five. He's being closely monitored in resus while doctors review his CT scan for any life-threatening injuries. Fractures of the right six and seven ribs. Oh. Hi there. So the second report we have, it's showing fractures of the right fifth and sixth ribs. You broke two ribs, Grandad. Yeah. Two ribs fractured. OK. Oh, thank goodness. No. <laughs> yeah. Sit you up a bit. <laughs> and do you live alone or do you live with somebody? i got a wife. And we've been married since 1947. 1947. Yeah. <laughs> um, you want a big medal good. for that, do she's you? otherwise, she's well at home, yeah? Yeah, she'd be on she, the wire, I think. 68. Oh, so she's, she's, 68 she's, years. Good, yeah. yeah. Right, Congratulations. Thank you. I expect it would be my fault when she yeah. sees me. You've been travelled. <laughs> yeah. yeah, never mind. It wouldn't yeah. be the first time, yeah. would it? No. Yeah. All right. I've always wanted a strong man. I was on this train one night. And this man sat opposite, he must have known me. And he said, aren't you the girlfriend going with Cyril? And I said, yes. Why? And he said, oh, he said, he's a proper old blackguard. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he likes his fighting. Hey, do you want to come with food? All right, don't rush. Oh, no, my dear. <laughs> oh, we want Trevor to find you. Try to find somewhere to park. Yeah, no I said, yes, I am going to marry him. Who is this? I pity you then. But he didn't have to. I don't know where the fish is gone. It's <laughs> in the back somewhere. That smells nice in the back of your car. He'd worked to make sure that we had money, wasn't well, a lot of money, but it was money to pay the bills. God, I'm as strong as you when I'm your age. Oh, dear. I think we've been very lucky. We had to work for what we got, but it was a good life. Something made you call the ambulance today? Yeah, my daughter called Your the ambulance. Daughter sort of yeah, because she got... saw her. She's okay. panicking. Okay, so what time was this last pain, you would say? Uh, when I was in the ambulance. Ambulance, yeah. okay. Caroline came into recess with chest pains. Initial scan reports suggest she's had a heart attack. I have a 57 year old lady. I faxed the ECG to 294. I don't know if you've seen them. Uh, her ECG with the pain is inferior rest elevation with reciprocal changes. Uh, so it's probably. Razor spasm of some sort. 
Although Caroline's condition has stabilized, doctors must determine the root cause of her heart attack to prevent further damage or a cardiac arrest. And who do you live with? Uh, my partner mm -hmm. and my daughter. The ECG, when we was in there, she had two more yeah, well, things. The ECG is showing that she's having heart attacks, but they've obviously got to find out what's causing it, and then they're going to come out, but they know we're here. Caroline's daughter, Chelsea, travelled to hospital in the ambulance. She's been joined in the waiting room by her brother, Max, boyfriend, Scott, and Caroline's partner, Ian. So what did they say they were, they were doing now? Just, I think, like the standard stuff that they was doing in the ambulance and indoors. <sighs> when I was really little, we were really close. She used to take me dancing every week and take me to my auditions and over Christmas take me to my pantos and stuff. <sighs> Towards the end of my first year at school, I started to get bullied. But my mum stood up for me a lot. It's cold in here. It is, isn't it? She saw one of the bullies' parents in a car, so she drove after them, like, flagged them down and got out of the car and spoke to this girl's mum and dad, and they were mortified. Do you want time to cover your legs? No, your legs are all right. You sure? Yeah. Well, they're not here, eh? They are. Are they? Yeah. I only done them the other day. She's my best friend. Yes, hello. How are you? OK. Your UCG doesn't look too good. Yes, I've heard. We certainly captured one UCG, one heart tracing, mm. to suggest that some artery might be narrow. OK. Cardiologist Dr Josh has come to recess to discuss Caroline's case. So, before today, the other doctor who spoke to me earlier said that you have had previous heart... Well, I had a heart attack in 2000. When she had her heart attack them years ago, I was only little, so I didn't really understand what was going on then. But now that you're older, you can appreciate what's going on and how poorly someone is. Looking at your ECG recording, if this is not due to spasm, we would expect you to have quite significant <laughs> coronary artery disease. She was really unwell. You know, she was really depressed and had to do what she had to do to make herself better. We likely to need to keep you in hospital for another angiogram. I found out that my mum and my dad were splitting up. On the actual day, she asked us both to come downstairs. And she was sitting on the sofa and she just said, I'm leaving, I can't do it anymore. And I didn't really understand what she was saying. And I cried, obviously, all the way to school and I got into school. And then, like, the day kind of dragged on and at that time I didn't have a mobile because I was really young. Um, and then I remember, because I had in my mind that my mum was going to be there when I got home, I ran all the way home. <laughs> and when I got out there, she was already gone. So you got five in there. I'm impressed. <laughs> I've impressed myself. <laughs> <laughs> All 
great. Style. Thank you Not so a problem. much for making the experience. <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, bless you. Thank All you right. so much. Take care. Really Bye. That. Thanks. Thank you. Bloody hurt, that injection did. So what, are they going to give you an angiogram? I think so, yeah. Tonight? Mm -hmm. well, they'll keep you in then, won't they? It's good that you got seen straight away, though, isn't it? Yeah. Caroline is being admitted for emergency surgery after having a heart attack less than two hours ago. Oh, come on. Well, if you're going on a water, well, yeah. Yeah. After her first heart attack in 2000, Caroline's marriage broke down. She left the family and moved to Scotland for three years. Have you had any more pain? Have you? When my mum left, as soon as that happened, I wasn't really like a kid anymore. I kind of had to step up to it and be a bit more responsible. I did the cooking, the washing, and especially at like 11 when you're going through puberty and like you're starting to like have little boyfriends and stuff and when I was obviously having trouble at school and when you want your mum there um, and she weren't there so yeah I missed her terribly. Oh, that was a bad one I was in that ambulance. Though. I know, I panicked. But then I think as I started getting older I started to feel a little bit let down and for a long time, I felt like that's like that's your children. How can you leave your children? Hello. Hi. You rang my consultant. We had a chat, and it happened that we actually the whole team is here because we just finished a case. So he, he said that, given your ECG appearance, we want to do it tonight. Oh, okay. So we can actually do it now. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. All right. Stay there. I'll be back. When she said that she was coming back down, I was really happy. <laughs> the, um, the whole team of cardiologists are here, so they're going to do an angiogram in 10 minutes Hello. for a wrist. It was like she'd never gone. It just, it was just like normal. It was just, I was back with my mum, so it wasn't, it wasn't weird. It was just like completely natural and where I felt I should have been. Just stay of your hand. Have you forgiven her? Yeah, definitely. As like as I've got older, you can appreciate why she did what she had to do to make herself happy. Are we ready? I think you're good. I've got games to play. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever tell your mum that? No. Who's your favourite superhero? Oh, that's easy, Hulk. Why? He's incredible and he's strong. If I could turn back the clocks now, would I left? Not in hindsight, no. No. I wasn't happy up there in Scotland. 
you know, I missed my kids, so I knew that I had to come back. I just want to live to see my kids grown up, married, children, happy. That's all I want. I always fancied her right from the word go. I used to think she was the cat's whiskers. <laughs> I always depend on her, you see. Always have, always will. What are the ingredients to a long and happy marriage? Well, give and take, ain't it, Cyril? Yeah. You know, uh... I give and she takes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't dip them. <laughs> don't eat. Oh, Adult meal trauma in 15 minutes. This is Lawrence, who's 27 years old. Deep bullseye to windshield onto floor. Any kind of impact in, a, in the right area can cause bleeding on the brain. That is potentially life threatening. Just didn't want him to be alone, just in case he went before I could get there. 